What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom, episode one and two. Yo, this series is good this is an isekai that's very unique and different if you guys know anything like this title let me know in the comments what i think is different is the hero so the hero was summoned to uh help revolutionize the kingdom or bring the kingdom to a new revolution or something like that and basically help the kingdom right but the thing was the hero was summoned uh as like a insurance collateral that's what it's called collateral in this isekai there is a demon lord there is a demon army wreaking havoc on the people and such but what's interesting is the demons actually take took over a continent and the do the two big countries that border it are the ones fighting off the demons and such and there's one kingdom that's doing a lot of work and they'll put more work if the other kingdoms give them the money so that's what's been happening but this kingdom elfreden i think it's called i hope i'm not butchering the name this kingdom is not doing much fighting so giving all the money but they're running out of money this empire that's fighting off the demons they're like okay well if you can't give us money then give us the summoning spell for our hero and they're like okay so it's either they give the spell or they summon the hero and give the hero to them and soma our male lead is the one that got summoned and so he's like okay so you're telling me if you guys can't give them money you're going to give them me they're like yeah he's like I don't want you to give them me. I want to stay. I don't want to fight for them. I, and he's asking, are they going to dissect me? What are they going to do with me? Because I'm not a fighter. And they're like, we don't know. And they're not saying no to the dissecting part. He's like, okay, I want to survive. <laughs> and he's asking, will there be other heroes being summoned? They're like, uh, our um, success rate of summoning heroes is like, one percent <laughs> they didn't say one percent but it's very low it took him 500 years to summon the hero so he's like okay we i need to help you guys because i don't want to go so he goes over all their financial stuff everything and he tells the king okay this is what you got to do this is the um financial reform these are the things you got to do this is what you got to concentrate on like he's going every different detail and the king was like so impressed he's like you'll be king and he announces it he didn't even run it over with soma he announced it to his people he's like okay he's going to be the new king and someone's like what <laughs> so soma the hero will uh save this kingdom financially and he's like feeling like he's just being dumped the job so he does all the work because he thought he was just going to be like an advisor but now that he's a king and he has like a sense of responsibility he's really getting himself involved and the king says that or former king the former king says that someone is going to be engaged to his daughter so it's, everything's going to work out it, everything makes sense and the daughter comes along and she totally thought that Soma usurped for the throne she thought that Soma stole it and Soma's like uh-uh I didn't steal it this was dumped on me I'm the victim <laughs> and he's able to talk it out with her now normally when we have hot-headed princesses which I oh I get annoyed with hot-headed princesses because there's so many of them and I get annoyed with them and I know the hot-headedness is for like character development and such and for comedy and whatnot but I get tired of it there's so many of them this guy the way they made the main lead 
work, like how to talk to this hot-headed princess. He made her rationalize, understand things, and she calmed down. I'm like, <gasps> she's not going to be a hot prin hot-headed princess. She's not. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I was very happy about that. So now I'm wondering, okay, where does this play? And he says that he only wants to be king for a few years. Only until the kingdom is financially stable. They don't have to send him to the empire. And they're good. And he's going to give the kingdom, kingdom? He's going to give the kingdom back to the girl. I'm like, okay, good, 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 good. Awesome. Back to the finances. So the empire is demanding money. The payment is due very, very soon, but they don't have any money. So the thing that's really bad is the kingdom doesn't have money. They're taking in refugees of people whose land were taken away by the demons and they're short on food. That's really bad. They're short on food and they don't have the money to buy more food. That's really, really bad. The people are going to be starving. They can't tax the people anymore because the people don't have money to buy food. So it's like, oh no, we need to prevent a revolt and such. Like, this is really bad. So Soma, he looks into the treasury to pay off uh, the empire. And they didn't have money, but they had treasure, national treasure. And so Soma sold some of that stuff and took that money and he's going to pay it off. Pay off the empire with that. And he does have some, he did keep some other national treasures and it's really smart. He's going to use them for a museum. So he found another way to profit from that. Another uh, flow of income. Oh, so good, so good. And remember when I said like he was looking at every little thing? He looked at the economics and apparently the farmers who did produce food, they went to produce cotton instead because in the north there were uh, people producing cotton but because the demons took over those lands and such, cotton was low. So there was like a high demand for cotton and cotton had like a high price. So farmers who made produce decided to make the cotton instead, sell the cotton, and the kingdom profited from that. But then everybody else did that too. All the other kingdoms did that. And so the cotton industry crashed. There was too many cotton being sold. So the price of cotton went down. And because a lot of farms forego produce to go for cotton not that much produce or fruit was being made so there was a high demand for fruit and fruit prices went up so the farms of this kingdom of freedom they had a lot of cotton farms that weren't selling and they were buying their food they were importing food and that food was more expensive than the cotton so they went broke <laughs> This is bad. I feel like that this kingdom got sabotaged or something like that. Like, yo, there's some internal shady business going on. But they didn't cover that in this episode, in episode one or two. This was episode two, actually. They didn't cover that, but I think so. I think something shady happened. I think there is a spy from another kingdom trying to mess up this kingdom. Anyways. And Soma, he was telling the princess about this. He was teaching her of what happens when you make wrong decisions, when you don't think of the bigger picture and how it affects everybody. So he's definitely prepping the princess, which I really like. I'm, there's a lot of education going on, a lot of critical thinking. There's not much action, so you really have to pay attention to the dialogue. And I really like this. Mm -hmm. You have to pay attention. You're just, you're not amazed by the action and stuff. You're amazed by the story. There's definitely going to be some world building because they introduced magic. Soma can do magic. He used it to be able to finish all the documents he has to do. He has to do a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of paperwork for some reason. I guess he's going through everything, like it's every little thing going on in the kingdom. 
and he's using his magic. I forget what it's called. It's called something, something po poltergeist. If you guys remember what it was, put it in the comments. And he's using that <laughs> to cut down all his paperwork. He has like three of them at once. So there's four of him. So he's working four times faster. Yay! So there's magic going on. Then they did introduce other dukedoms. There's three other ones. One is like run by like a dragon with red hair. Another uh, dragon, watcher dragon-like person with blue hair. And a lion. So they have different things going on, but they're all different dukedoms. And they are going to investigate Soma to see if he's like a good king or not because the decision of him being king was very abrupt. It was kind of spontaneous looking, <laughs> but it was abrupt. They don't know this guy. They were away when this decision was being made. This this guy, Soma, is the one ruling them. So it's like, okay, well, we need to see if you're okay. Because I ain't calling you boss unless I approve you. <laughs> anyway, so there's that. And then... Doma, he's like, I need new people because the people who let this kingdom go down, go in the red, I don't want to keep them. If they let the kingdom get ruined like this, how do I know they're not going to do it again? I need fresh people. I need new people. I need people who are going to do what I want them to do and good. So he does a recruitment. And this was such a good recruiting. This was on episode two. He does a broadcast recruiting with a gemstone with magic and he's able to say, tell it to everybody in the land and what he's doing is he's trying to recruit people with talent. The saying he used was if you possess an aptitude we'll make use of it. So he's looking for people who specialize in things that will benefit the kingdom and I think that's really cool. And he's saying that it doesn't matter what class you are, it doesn't matter if you can read or write, if you know you are the best at that, come here, show it to me, I'll be the judge. And there are people who already have talents, so we're going to see people from all over the kingdom come in and show what they're best at. And this is another form of world building, and I'm excited for this, especially, um, they kind of showed who had talents, but we don't know what they are. And one of them is like a beast girl. She looks like she's really poor and it turns out she's a refugee. So I'm excited to see what her talent is and how she's going to rise from the bottom to the top and support this kingdom. Oh, it's getting exciting. The part where they gave us a sneak peek of the different talents that will come to the kingdom, that was the end of episode 2. Before I end this review, I do want to point something out that they showed us in episode 1. It was very short, but it was Soma talking to his grandfather, and his grandfather was talking about how important family is. And the importance of family lets you not be alone and such, and before before the grandpa left, like one of his last advice for Soma before he passed away was to get a family, build a family, and protect it. Do whatever you can to protect this family. So before Soma was summoned, he was alone. He didn't have any family. And I think this is a foundation for him. He's going to view this kingdom as a family and he's going to protect it whatever he needs to no matter what, however he can, and I'm kind of anticipating who he's going to view as family because it seems like he's viewing the princess as one, even though their engagement isn't really an engagement because he's planning to give the kingdom back to her. He's not really planning to stay, and I'm wondering the people who are going to come in with the talents, his retainers, his peeps. I wonder if he's going to view them as family. Not too sure, but I'm very interested in that. And another thing that was pointed, I want to point out is it seems like he wants to go back home, but he doesn't have anyone waiting for him at home. And it made it seem like he can. Like he can be put back in his original world, which is not normal. Normally, in these isekai kind of stuff where people get summoned there's no way to send them back i 
happy he can be sent back they never really said it they didn't but i don't think he wants to towards the end i think he's going to build a family and he's going to stay and he's going to protect it that's the end of my review of how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom episode one and two what do you think about those episodes? If there's anything I missed and you want to talk about, let me know in the comments below and let me know what you thought about this video. If you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Discord link is available in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. If people who watch these videos do this like to step by the stream, have a one-on-one weird time conversation. You guys are more than welcome. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link the podcast in the description. We are available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this was the Superfina channel, reviewing how a realist rebuilt the kingdom, episode one and two. Hope you guys like this video, and I will see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.